Back in the day, Cartoon Network had a bit of a habit of airing shows with multiple different segments and then eventually spinning them off into their own show. They did it with Cow and Chicken, which also featured an I Am Weasel segment and led to both shows eventually being spun off into their own thing. This exact same thing happened with the show Grim and Evil. Grim and Evil consisted of two segments, a Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy segment and an Evil Con Carne segment. Grim and Evil lasted just two seasons and 13 episodes in this format before both segments became their own full-fledged show. However, Evil Con Carne pretty much crashed and burned, while Grim Adventures became one of Cartoon Network's most iconic shows. In fact, in Australia, Evil Con Carne was almost never played. I literally have almost no recollection of it ever airing. Grim and Evil made its debut on August 24, 2001, while the standalone Grim Adventures show began airing on June 13, 2003. The show was created by Maxwell Adams, who also created Chowder and worked on Cow and Chicken. The story of Grim Adventures finally becoming its own show is actually pretty long and winding. It all actually kicked off way back in 1996 as a short Adams had created, and this was actually shown publicly for the first time last year. Eventually, the idea for Grim and Evil was formed, and this was put up in Cartoon Network's Big Pick poll, which pitted a number of cartoons against each other and allowed the audience to decide which would become a full-fledged series. Grim and Evil won an impressive 57% of the vote, and as I explained earlier, the show eventually spun off into two different series. The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy was one of my favourite childhood shows, so it'll be interesting to jump back in and view it in 2017. Before I get stuck right into the review, it's probably important that I mention I'm reviewing the Grim and Evil segments of The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, or what I'm going to be referring to as Season Zero. There are 23 segments that aired during this time, so it's basically an 11 episode season, which is longer than Grim Adventures Season 2, which only had 8 episodes. The early episodes that aired on Grim and Evil are quite rough around the edges, which is probably to be expected. Both the animation and the voice acting is trying to find its feet, and it's a little jarring to watch after having seen the later seasons. Cartoon Network would often air these episodes here, which was even more jarring at the time, considering they were squeezed between later, more polished episodes. The really interesting thing you get here is an almost up close and personal view of the show growing and developing. The further you watch, the better the voice work gets, and the animation really settles into a groove and becomes what we've all become used to. The segments in this incarnation of Grim Adventures are 7 minutes long due to Grim and Evil featuring 3 segments. If you've seen my Cow and Chicken Season 1 review, you'll know I wasn't a fan of the 7 minute time limit there at all. However, I don't think the restriction was too much of a problem here. I felt like they were able to utilise the time pretty well and it never felt like they were having to cut corners. This might be because they kept the stories relatively simple, whereas in Cow and Chicken it seemed like they were overextending themselves and shoving too many setting changes in for how long they had to work with. A lot of the foundation of what Grim Adventures would eventually become is present here and it ensures the show, even in its infancy, is still an enjoyable watch. There were many laugh out loud moments here, which I usually find to be hard to come by in a comedic show that's aimed at kids. This isn't me saying kids comedies aren't funny, that couldn't be further than the truth. I just don't generally find myself uncontrollably laughing out loud to something like Dexter's Lab compared to a show like Archer. A lot of recurring characters are introduced here too. Characters like Nurgle, Hoss Delgado, and Eris are all introduced here, and in the cases of Nurgle and Hoss, they're actually featured in multiple episodes. I feel like this is a little bit of an underrated aspect of Grim Adventures. We know the Powerpuff Girls and codenamed Kids Next Door for their iconic and really interesting villains, but Grim Adventures actually has a lot of iconic antagonists too. I always found that episodes featuring these characters were a great change of pace from the episodes just featuring the three main characters. As I mentioned earlier, you can feel the show growing as you watch these segments, and this culminates in the final episode, which is a musical. The episode is titled Little Rock of Horrors, obviously a play on Little Barbershop of Horrors, and I feel like it's actually one of the best episodes of Grim Adventures. I'm never really a fan of musical episodes, but the music and the song here is great, and the animation really has come a long way since the very first episode that tells the origin story of how Grim ends up with the kids. Brains, brains, I will lie. I'll eat the brains to the sound Sure, they might think it's deranged, but they will give me the thought after I've eaten their brain. At 
this point, the show is basically indistinguishable from the standalone seasons in terms of both aesthetic and overall quality. It's clear from the very beginning that the show isn't afraid to take risks and get dark too. Heck, in one of the very first episodes, Grimm is shown fantasizing more than once about killing Billy and Mandy because he really hates his new life with them. I love when a show isn't afraid to get a little dark and push boundaries, and when your show features the Grim Reaper as a main character, it's almost expected of you to test the waters and see what you can get away with. Honestly, the only problem I have with the show so far is that Billy can sometimes be stupid for the sake of stupid. Most of the time his random and weird nature creates plenty of laughs, but there are times when I'm just left thinking that they're making Billy act way dumber than he's set up to be, just for the sake of trying to elicit a few more laughs. It's way more enjoyable when Billy is presented as naive rather than being full on intellectually challenged. It's a similar problem The Simpsons have run into the longer it's gone on, with making Homer dumber and dumber just to give cause for why he finds himself in these never ending wacky situations. Having this be my only real complaint about the show is still pretty good though. I am the Grim Reaper, ruler of the underworld. Or at least I was until I met Billy and Mandy. Those kids don't deserve a friend like me. Ooh, wow, red! Let's go torture the Grim Reaper. That's it. I've had it! The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, part of the Grim and Evil Show. Tonight at 8.30, only on Cartoon Network. Season 0 of The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy is fantastic, all things considered. Sure, it's rough around the edges for the first handful of episodes, but it quickly settles into a groove and surprisingly finds the formula that would make the show so successful in almost no time at all. It's not as good as the six seasons of the standalone show, but you can see here exactly why the decision was made to make it a standalone show. 